Welcome back, Future Medicos. Recently, I was invited to speak at the Hindu Education Plus Career Fair 2022, which was held at the Trade Center Chennai on 20th June 2022 and 21st June 2022. My session was on 20th June 2022. I spoke about the medical counseling procedures, particularly the procedures for Tamil Nadu. Many candidates and parents attended this event. And after the event, they requested me to share the video or the presentation slides in my YouTube channel so they can refer the content I was discussing at a later stage. Subsequently, after the presentation, there are many requests from other parents um, who said that they could not make it to the uh, talk. So they asked me, can I uh, share the presentation slides or can I conduct this uh, webinar again so that everyone can benefit? So I thought, okay, instead of sharing with each and everyone, why don't I redo the presentation and post it as a video, okay? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to exactly reproduce whatever the content I spoke at the Hindu uh, uh, career fair. Of course, I might add a few more details. I might miss out some details, but generally I'm going to use the same presentation slides. So more or less, you will be able to get the content I spoke at the seminar, right? Now let's go into uh, the content and let's discuss. Okay, so this is the topic I spoke about, what next after NEET? So basically, this is about after you complete the NEET exam, what are the things you need to do to get medical admission, right? That's, that's the thing. Okay, first of all, I just want to caution you, okay? You can see here, there are lots of uh, um, news that's coming out in the newspapers. I have taken some screenshots after Googling. You can see that, right, there are so much medical admission fraud happens in India, okay? Because medical admission is still attractive. Uh, parents are very worried. Parents are scared whether their child will get a seat or not. So they try to approach agents. They try to approach middlemen and then try to see whether, whether they can uh, book a seat in advance, whether to try and go to the college try through agents, right? They do all kinds of things. And that leads to people who try to cheat, that gives an opportunity, right? And it's surprising that very well-educated parents also get cheated because of the fear that their child will not get MBBS. Okay, I tell you now, getting an MBBS seat is not that difficult. It's not that difficult as many parents think. If you have a very good score, you will certainly get a seat. If you have lots and lots of money, you will also get a seat. The only problem is people who score less and also don't have money, they will find it difficult. Anyway, they also cannot go to the agent because they don't have the money. So they will not be affected. Uh, so I see typically a few group of people, one who score very high, they have no problem, right? They will get into good government medical colleges or even in private medical colleges with a reasonable fees. So let's not worry about people with high score. People with medium score and have reasonable money, they also no problem. They will be able to get into private colleges either under a government quota or management quota. They should be able to get a seat. Then people with low score and lot of money, right? They also no problem. This is the people, the people with low score and lot of money, that's the people easily get cheated because they try to get a seat in whatever way they want, right? They, they try as much as possible to get a seat. But my advice to you, if you have lots of money, just go through the government counseling because getting a seat, if you have money, if you can afford one crore plus getting a seat is not a problem. So don't get greedy. Don't uh, get cheated by people when they say, oh, you have 150 score. I can get you a government medical college. Don't get into that trap. So be practical, right? For your score, what college you can get, try that you'll be able to get a seat, okay? So avoid 
paying money to the agent go through proper government counseling procedures understand the government counseling procedures go through that right that's my advice now what will typically happen after need okay there are certain things that will happen after need uh, after need um, immediately after the exam right the same day right july 17 the exam is happening the same day evening lot of coaching institutes will publish unofficial answer keys right that's not official but unofficial answer keys by the experts right the experts from every coaching institute like alan akash and so on right many many coaching institutes are there they will publish the unofficial answer key so based on the unofficial answer key roughly you can estimate what would be your score right because mostly the candidates would have marked their answer in the question paper so they should be able to roughly estimate what would be their score at least the range of the score because unofficial answer key is not necessarily the exact one there could be one or two questions might have a different answers in the official answer key so that would be an official i mean that that would be an unofficial score range you could get based on the unofficial answer key but that will give you an idea whether you will be able to go into government medical colleges whether you are in the border line between government colleges and private colleges whether your score is very very low so you should be able to roughly estimate the score so do that so that you can plan further ahead for admission then the next step is nta will release the official answer key as well as they will be releasing the omr responses given by you that is whatever answer you have given they will give give back to you right they will give the omr responses and the official answer key now based on your omr responses and the official answer key you should be able to find out the almost the exact score that you will be getting right then in case if you find uh, something wrong with the omr responses shared by nta you think that your omr is different or some of the questions were not correctly captured or you think that official answer key is wrong then you can challenge nta if you think it is really necessary okay uh, try this only if it is really necessary because uh, very difficult to get the challenge uh, against nta but if you think there is a genuine reason for you to challenge certainly you can challenge them there is an option then once the challenge window is over uh nta will finally release the um results okay and uh, once the results are released you will know your exact score neat score you will know what is your all india rank and then the counseling process starts okay this is what will happen uh, after the neat exam so neat exam is on july 17 so we can expect uh, the results somewhere around mid of august right provided right nothing happens after the neat exam there is no complaint there is no court cases right probably we can expect the results around mid august now let's understand what are the types of medical colleges available in india right this is very important for you to understand now first of all we have state government medical colleges every state they have certain medical colleges government medical colleges for example in tamil nadu we have madras medical college stanley medical college kir park medical college madurai medical college and so on if you go to karnataka say for example you have bangalore medical college if you go to delhi you have maulana azad so similarly every state there will be lot of government medical colleges then we have aims right all india institute of medical sciences we have jipmer uh, jipmer we have two campuses jipmer puducherry and jipmer karekal and then we have this prestigious armed forces medical college situated at pune we have central universities like banaras hindu university aligarh muslim university we have private self financing medical colleges which are affiliated to the state government medical university for example in tamil nadu we have dr mgr medical university tamil nadu dr mgr medical university so the private colleges that are affiliated to the tamil nadu dr mgr medical university will be called as private self financing medical colleges for example we have psg medical college in coimbatore we have kmch medical college in coimbatore 
we have velamal medical college in madurai uh, we have tagur medical college in chennai we have panimalar medical college in chennai we have a christian medical college velur cmc velur all of them come under the private self financing category then finally we have something called private universities and deemed universities again private universities is a separate category deemed universities is a separate category private universities typically come under the state government act of private universities in tamil nadu for medical we have only one private university which is ds university dhanalakshmi srinivasan university and it has a college uh, at samayapuram srinivasan medical college at samayapuram which comes under the private universities category this college uh, was supposed to start admission last year but it didn't happen so probably this year they may start the admission they have already got approval from nmc so most likely they should be able to start admission from 2022 23 and finally we have this deemed universities category deemed universities there are many deemed universities across india we have close to about 50 deemed universities in tamil nadu we have like uh, sri ramachandra uh, university or sri ramachandra medical college srm medical college savita uh, chettinad um, meenakshi right these are all deemed universities so there are many many deemed universities you know kmc manipal kmc mangalore jss mysore right all these are deemed universities so these are the various types of medical colleges available so understand this for all of them neat is the admissions um process right for example aims there is no separate exam jipmer there is no separate exam we used to have separate exams but right now only neat score is needed so only one college which have additional filtration procedure in addition to neat is armed forces medical college pune this is the only college in india that has additional procedures other than neat score this is the only college where a person with low score can get admission over a person with a higher neat score considering everything else is equal you belong to the same category right uh, you are applying to the same type of seat still a low score guy can get a seat than a high score guy how it is possible in amfmc pune because amfmc pune the admission procedure is first the filtration happens based on neat score approximately about 2000 candidates will be shortlisted based on their neat score then these 2000 candidates will be called to pune campus at pune campus they need to write a written test called test of english language and reasoning toelr and then they also have to go through an interview and based on their performance in neat their performance in the written test their performance in the interview they will be selected so it's a combination of all the three someone say for example someone has scored 700 marks in neat but someone has scored 600 marks in neat there is a possibility that a person with 600 score can um, be selected over a person with 700 score because the other person might do well in the written test and might do well in the interview so keep that in mind but other than afmc all other colleges they use only neat score to select people now moving ahead roughly what is the number of mbbs seats available in india uh, we have uh, nearly 92000 mbbs seats this is based on uh, nmc website um, national medical commission uh, as of 18 june 2022 we have 92000 mbbs seats approximately and 50 percentage of them roughly 50 percentage of them are government seats and roughly 50 percentage of them are private Uh, college seats like uh, when i say private colleges i'm talking about private self financing medical colleges private universities and deemed universities now within tamil nadu so this is the breakdown uh, state government colleges we have 5050 mbbs seats esi chennai uh, which comes under esi corporation uh, 125 seats are available aims madurai has 50 seats private self financing colleges there are 2850 seats private university as i said one private university it offers 150 seats 
deemed universities offer 2500 seats so totally we have 10725 mbbs seats within the geography of tamil nadu state okay within the geography of tamil nadu state we have 10725 mbbs seats which are offered by 70 medical colleges now let's look at the type of seat we have seen the type of medical colleges let us also look at the type of seats available we have state government colleges as i said within state government colleges we have two category of seats state government quota and all india quota state government quota there are 85% seats and 15% seats go to all india quota now state government quota uh, say for example in uh, let's take madras medical college madras medical college has totally 250 mbbs seats out of this 15% that is approximately about 37 38 seats will go to all india quota the remaining 212 seats will go to state quota now for the state quota only residents of tamil nadu are eligible to apply other state candidates cannot get a seat under the 85% state quota whereas for the 15% all india quota anyone can get a seat anyone say for example if someone wants to study in mmc but they are from delhi they can apply through all india quota and get a seat or even a candidate from tamil nadu itself right i am from chennai i am interested in an mmc i have a very good score i want to go through all india quota yes you can go through all india quota it's your choice second we have esi colleges right for example esi chennai esi chennai if you can see uh, there are 65 percentage seats go to state quota 15 percentage all india quota and there are 20 percentage seats under esi quota or ip quota sometimes they call it ip quota insured persons quota to be eligible for this uh, you need to be insured with esi corporation and you should be holding the esi card and your salary should be below a certain limit right you can go and check at esi corporation site and to get this eligibility you need to register with esi corporation before getting to the counseling right you need to get the approval from esi then we have within tamil nadu we have non minority private colleges and minority private colleges non minority private colleges we have examples like psg velammal kmch uh, karpagavinayaga right these are all uh, non minority private colleges and non minority private colleges the distribution is 65% of the seats will be considered as government quota 20% of the seats will be management quota 15% of the seats will be nri quota then minority private colleges in tamil nadu we have three kinds of minority colleges one uh, christian minority colleges like cmc velur madha medical college panimalar medical college right we have christian medical colleges then we have telugu minority private college right telugu minority private college for example we have tirchi srm annapurna medical college right we have telugu minority private colleges and then we have malayalam minority private colleges uh, we have only one malayalam minority private college uh, which is located in kanyakumari sri mukambiga medical college so uh, we have basically three different kinds of minority private colleges a christian which is religious minority and then we have linguistic minority now what is the distribution the distribution is 50% of the seats in these colleges are considered as government quota 35% seats will be given to minority to that specific minority right for example in panimalar 35% of the seats will be given to christian candidates okay cmc velour the distribution is slightly different uh, then finally we have 15% nri quota now if you look at the non minority colleges and minority private colleges the government quota fees is slightly lesser okay and then uh, management quota fees will be higher and then nra quota fees will even be higher and the seats that are falling vacant in nra quota they will be offered as something called nra lapsed quota and the nra lapsed quota fees will be somewhere in between so government quota fees minority minority or management quota fees 
then NRI lapsed quota fees, then NRI quota fees, right? That's the four slabs of fee structure in private colleges in Tamil Nadu. Okay, in other states, this will be slightly different. I'm only talking about Tamil Nadu. Then finally, deemed universities, 85% of the seats are considered as management quota or paid quota. And then finally, 15% of the seats considered as NRI quota. Now, remember one thing, even though I say management quota, NRI quota, it doesn't mean you can directly get the seat from the college. You have to go through government counseling. Even management quota seats are filled by government counseling. You don't need to approach any individual college. It's very important for you to understand. Please approach only the government counseling. You don't need to waste time going to individual colleges. Try to approach them. Try to get a seat. Try to block seats in advance. It is not at all necessary. You can visit the colleges. I'm not against that. Visit the college to understand the college, to see the infrastructure, to talk to the students, to talk to the faculty, right? to see the facilities available, to see the hospital, to see the patient flow, right? to understand the college, please visit the colleges. That's fine. Absolutely fine. You need to do that. But don't visit the college with the intention of trying to book a seat, which is not necessary. That's what I'm saying, which is not necessary. Some of you might ask, do you mean to say that no college can do direct admission? There is a possibility. I will talk about that at the end of the video. Now, the reservation um, system in Tamil Nadu, I have done some videos about reservation system in Tamil Nadu, so you can see that video. But this is the uh, reservation distribution. 69% reservation and 31% considered as open category. Now, within the 69%, this is the distribution, BC 26.5%, BCM, that is BC Muslim 3.5%, MBC 20%, SC 15%, SCA, SC Arundhadiyar 3% and ST 1%. Now, this is uh, the reservation, 69%, but within this, we also have some horizontal reservation. For example, we have 7.5% reservation for government school students across each category. Within each category, 7.5% reservation is done for students from government school uh, who has uh, done their studies from 6th to 12th in government schools. Then we also have 5% reservation for persons with disabilities. If you qualify under persons with disabilities, Every category, there is a 5% reservation. Then we also have 10 seats reserved for children of ex-servicemen and seven seats are reserved for eminent sports person. So these are the reservation for MBBS seats in Tamil Nadu. Now, how many applications do you need to submit? As I already said, you don't need to apply to individual colleges, okay? Particularly uh, parents who are already involved in engineering admission, Please don't get confused between what is happening in engineering admission and medical admission. In engineering, you can approach individual college. For management quota, Tamil Nadu government does not do the counseling. Tamil Nadu government does the counseling only for government quota in engineering. But whereas when it comes to medical, 100% of the seats, the counseling is done by the government. So please understand, don't get yourself confused by what you have um, collected the details for engineering because engineering admission procedures are different from medical admission procedures. The documents needed for medical admission is completely different from engineering admission. Keep that in mind. Don't get confused. Now, how many applications you should submit? Minimum one application. Minimum. I'm talking about minimum. Okay. Minimum one application you need to submit to Tamil Nadu Medical Selection Committee provided you have a very good score okay what is this application for this application will make you eligible for two categories one the state quota 85 percent state quota in tamil nadu government colleges and then the government quota in tamil nadu private colleges at right? these two categories one application is sufficient if you are submit one application you can choose um, uh, you can give choices for all these colleges. 
this is okay if your score is very good but if your score is in the borderline you are not sure whether you will get the government quota you also want to try management quota right you can afford management quota then you may have to submit two applications the second application is for management quota minority quota nra quota and nri lapsed seats if you are interested in any of these categories then you need to do the second registration so should i do one or two which one can i do is should i do only one no you can it's your choice you can submit this application only or you can submit only this application or you can submit both applications it is your uh, choice right for example if your score is say uh, 300 marks or 350 marks you know that you won't get government colleges right then you want to try only management quota that's fine you don't need to register here but ideally i would recommend most of the candidates to register for both okay register for both now the third application if you are interested particularly candidates with very good score you should try all india counseling now the all india counseling is conducted by medical counseling committee or mcc now what are the seats that come under mcc once again a single registration with mcc will enable you to participate in the counseling for all india quota seats in state government colleges that is as i said 15 percentage of the seat in every government medical college will be given to mcc so this is not only from tamil nadu every state will give 15 percentage of the seats for example karnataka government colleges 15 percentage of the seats will be taken and given to the central government andhra 15 percentage telangana 15 percentage maharashtra 15 percentage uttar pradesh 15 percentage so from all states 15 percentage of the government seats are given to the mcc and mcc will put them all together and any candidate across india can participate in the counseling so if you have a very good score certainly try for all india counseling or if you have a very low score then also you can try for deemed universities so typically mcc or all india counseling is for candidates who have very good score or lower score right uh, so you can try all india quota if you are interested in aims all india institute of medical sciences again you need to register with mcc aims does not have a separate admission then jipmer if you are interested in jipmer pondicherry or karikal you must register here central universities right you must register afmc the first stage selection is done by mcc deemed universities esi quota for all these category of colleges or seats you must register with mcc all india counseling then the last category is other state private colleges right say for example you are interested in joining karnataka you are interested in the karnataka private colleges say uh, ms ramayya medical college st john's medical college you are interested to join those colleges or maybe let's take andhra or telangana you are interested in apollo medical college chitur or you are interested in apollo medical college hyderabad right if you are interested in other states then you can register with the authority in that particular state right private colleges management quota you need to register with respective states deemed universities if you are interested in any other state that is done through medical counseling committee medical counseling committee covers all deemed universities one registration will cover all deemed universities across india but when it comes to private colleges unfortunately you have to register with individual state so if you are interested in karnataka you can register with karnataka if you are interested in andhra you can register with andhra if you are interested in uh, telangana you can register with telangana and so on right there is no limit you can register as many states as you want but try to select the states which you are really interested and then you can register now these are the admission authorities in other states i have only shown the southern states right you can uh, try to find out if you are interested in northern states you can find out the authorities uh, in southern states as i said tamil nadu we have tamil nadu medical selection committee karnataka we have something called karnataka examinations authority or keea 
Puducherry, we have CENTAC, Centralized Admissions Committee. Andhra Pradesh, the admission is done by Dr. NTR, University of Health Sciences. Telangana, the admission is done by KNR, University of Health Sciences. Kerala, we have something called Commissioner for Entrance Examinations. Right? These are the admission authorities in that respective state. Now, what are the documents needed for Tamil Nadu candidates? Okay, if you are interested in Tamil Nadu state quota, then you need to prepare all these documents. Please remember, now is the time you must get all the documents ready. You should not be um, right lethargic in this. You should not like, ah, I will do it when the counseling starts. I will do it when the application is called for, right? It will put a lot of stress. From now on, please start collecting these documents, select, create a file, keep all these documents properly, right? It's very important. Uh, you need a NEET admit card. Remember, NEET admit card is needed until your admission is completed. So keep a copy of NEET admit card before you go for the exam. So during the exam, the NEET admit card may be collected by the supervising um, people in the exam hall. So before you go to the NEET exam, please keep a copy of the NEET admit card, right? You paste the photo, you sign whatever sign you need to do before going to the exam hall. Some signature has to be done in, in the exam hall. So please ensure that whatever you need to sign at home, sign and then take a copy, maybe a couple of copy or scan it and keep it ready with you because you need the NEET admit card during admission procedure. You need the NEET scorecard after the NEET results are out. Uh, NTA will um, uh, share the NEET scorecard. You can download and keep a copy of it. This is also needed until the end of the admission procedure. 10th mark sheet, 11th mark sheet and 12th mark sheet. Now 11th mark sheet will be needed only for Tamil Nadu state board candidates who took the um, public exam, right? Um, generally other boards like CBSC or ICSC or any other boards, generally they will not have 11th mark sheet, that's fine. As long as you have 10th and 12th, that's sufficient. Only Tamil Nadu state board students, the two who has to take on the public examination. If someone has uh, passed, um, the, uh, passed the 11th in uh, 2015 or 2016, and they are taking the NEET exam now, they may not have uh, 11th uh, mark sheet because there was no public exam at that particular time. So in that case, it's okay. You don't need 11th exam, right? So 10th, 11th, 12th mark sheet, your TC, you need the TC from the school. In case if you have joined somewhere, maybe you might have joined an engineering college, you might have joined some arts and science college, you might have given your TC to the college, the college may be keeping the TC. In that case, you need a bona fide certificate from the college that you are studying in that college, right? You need a bona fide certificate. So either the transfer certificate or bona fide certificate from the college where you are currently studying. You need the nativity certificate. Please remember this is mandatory. Please get it. Don't think that, oh, some people got admission without nativity certificate, right? I don't need it. I don't want to get it, right? I'm lazy. Revenue officer is not giving, right? Don't give excuses. Please try to get it because this might become a problem during admission. You might lose the seat because you don't have a nativity certificate. Please remember, try to get the nativity certificate. It's easier to get. Go to eSeva center or go to eSeva website. Uh, it costs you only 60 rupees and it will be issued in less than two weeks, right? So it's a simple procedure. It's only that whether you want to try or not. Then you need a study certificate. Uh, you need, uh, if you have studied in Tamil Nadu from 6 to 12 standard, you need to get a study certificate for the period in which you have studied. So if you have studied from 6 to 12 in one school, Go to that school, get a study certificate that you have studied from 6th to 12th in this school from this year to this year, right? Get that certificate from the headmaster or principal. If you have studied, let's say, in two schools, 6th to 10th in one school, 11th and 12th in one school, then get two certificates from both the school. One school each, right? You have to get a certificate. If you have studied in three schools, get it from three schools. Now, in case if you have studied somewhere else, say, not in Tamil Nadu, you have studied in Karnataka from 6th to 10th, 11th and 12th you have studied in Tamil Nadu. 
then just get the certificate for 11th and 12th. You do not need a certificate for the period which you have studied outside Tamil Nadu. Some of you might have studied overseas, right? Then you don't need the certificate. Some of you have studied, for example, 6th to 8th overseas, 9th to 12th in Tamil Nadu. Then get the study certificate only for 9th to 12th. So the study certificate is to prove the period that you have studied in Tamil Nadu, right? That's it. So get the study certificate, get the community certificate. If you want, if you have some reservation, right? Then you need the community certificate. If you belong to open category, you do not come under any reservation, then you do not have a community certificate. Don't worry. Other card, then you need some parents documents. You need the documents either for the father or the mother. One of them is sufficient. Okay. You don't need both. You try to get either the certificates for the father or the certificates for the mother. Now, what are the documents needed? You need one of these documents that is either TC, 10th mark sheet, 12th mark sheet, or first graduate certificate or no graduate certificate, right? One of these certificate is sufficient. If you have 10th mark sheet, sufficient. If you have 12th mark sheet, that's sufficient, right? One of these documents. If your parents have not studied, then you can look for first graduate certificate or no graduate certificate. You can get it from the revenue department. Then you need one of these documents. The second group, you need one of the documents. Like you need either driving license, ration card, passport, or voter ID. Preferably try to get the ration card, right? Ration card is taken as a primary address proof and ration card will be very, very useful. Then community certificate of the parent. If you are claiming reservation, the community certificate is not only sufficient for the candidate, the parent also should have the same community certificate. Then PAN card of the parent, because um, if you are going to study in a private college, typically the fees will be higher. So private colleges might ask you the PAN card. If you are going to study in government colleges, maybe they won't ask the PAN card because the fee structure is very low. But if you are studying in a private college, typically they might ask a PAN card. So please get a PAN card also for the parents. Then you need the eligibility certificate from Tamil Nadu Dr. MGR Medical University. Please note, this is not needed for candidates who have studied in Tamil Nadu State Board. That is the candidates who have cleared 12th exam from Tamil Nadu State Board. If you have studied in CBSC, even if you have studied CBSC in Chennai, you need to get the eligibility certificate. Now, when you can get the eligibility certificate, you can get the eligibility certificate after the NEET results. You cannot get it now. You can get it only after the NEET results. So wait until the NEET results are published. Then visit Dr. MGR Medical University website. The website will provide an online application. You can fill the online application and then get the uh, eligibility certificate. Now, some candidates have asked during the presentation, sir, I got the certificate last year. Do I need to get again? Uh, yes, unfortunately, um, the medical university wants you to apply every year with the need score of that particular year because the eligibility certificate is also based on the need score. So they want to see your current need score. So if you, even if you have got it last year, you may have to get it again, right? So I will provide a link to the video where I have explained the procedure to get the eligibility certificate. You can see that video if you want more details. Then minority category say if, if, if you are coming either a, a religious minority like christians or linguistic minority like telugu or malayalam then you need to get a certificate either from your school or from the revenue department to prove that you belong to that particular minority category now who is who can use telugu minority seats uh, only natives of tamil nadu who speak telugu as their mother tongue you should be native of Tamil Nadu, but you should be speaking Telugu as your mother tongue. Similarly, Malayalam, you should be native of Tamil Nadu and you should be speaking Malayalam as your mother tongue, right? Candidates from Kerala cannot come and get these Malayalam minority seats, right? Okay, then uh, the other categories like ex-servicemen category, you need to get a, a dependent certificate from the uh, ex-servicemen welfare board, ESM welfare board. Persons with benchmark disabilities, you need to get a certificate from Rajiv Gandhi General Hospital, Chennai. 
and uh, eminent sports person category you need to produce the certificates of your sports achievements uh, either national achievements or international achievements right you need to produce all the necessary details then income certificate it's not needed for everyone only for candidates who belong to either sc sca st or sc converted christians and their annual income is less than 2.5 lakhs annual income is less than 2.5 lakhs if you fulfill this criteria then you can provide the income certificate that might uh, be that might make you eligible for some benefits that's the purpose uh, so it's not mandatory but it will help you provided you fulfill these requirements and for all india quota right this is common doubt from many people and even during the presentation many candidates ask this question for all india quota you need obc ncl certificate if you are a bc candidate if you are a bcm candidate if you are uh, say mbc candidate and you want to uh, avail um, obc reservation in central government then you need obc ncl certificate what is obc ncl obc non creamy layer now some of you might say sir i am a bc candidate but i don't come under non creamy layer i i belong to creamy layer then what happens what can i do no problem you can still participate in all india counseling you will be considered as a general candidate you will not be able to use the obc reservation but you will be able to participate as a general candidate but when you come to tamil nadu counseling when tamil nadu admission happens you will be considered as a bc candidate so in tamil nadu you will be able to use the reservation but when you go to all india you will be considered as a general candidate sir i belong to non creamy layer i have not got the obc certificate yet can i use my bc certificate no you cannot if you are interested in getting the obc reservation in central government you must get the obc ncl certificate once again it is not that difficult it's easier to get again you can use the e seva online application or e seva center provide the necessary documents probably you should be able to get it in uh, less than 2 weeks right the first time um i remember i applied um i think last year i applied and i got it in uh, uh, less than 2 days right in 2 days i got the certificate okay so it's not that difficult to get the government certificates nowadays there is online provision just check and ensure that you follow the right procedure similarly if you want to uh, avail the ews reservation in central government all india counseling then you need the ews certificate but unfortunately we don't have ews reservation in tamil nadu tamil nadu does not provide ews reservation in any of the government colleges so the ews certificate is not needed in tamil nadu in tamil nadu you will be considered as a open candidate but in all india counseling if you have a ews certificate you can use that to get a seat ews reservation now nra candidates nra candidates needs first of all the nra status of the financial supporter issued by the indian embassy of the respective country if you are working in say saudi arabia you need to get a certificate from the embassy in saudi arabia that you are a nra so this is needed for either the father or the mother so if you are talking about the nra seats in tamil nadu only either the father or mother can sponsor the candidate but when it comes to all india counseling when it comes to say for example uh, deemed universities uh, the close relative can also sponsor when i say close relative who are the close relative it could be your uncle it could be your aunt your that is brother or sister of your father brother or sister of your mother your grandparents that is paternal grandparents or maternal grandparents they can sponsor your first level cousins that is uh the children of your uncle or aunt they also can sponsor right that's those are the only people who can sponsor you cannot get sponsorship from some x y z so please remember this because some agents will promote that i will get you nri seat so don't get cheated by them only close relatives only if you produce 
such a um, record, you will be able to get a seat. So for them, you need the NRI status certificate. You need the certificate of relationship between uh, the sponsor and the candidate. NRE bank account passbook, passport of the sponsor, right? In Tamil Nadu, say, for example, if you are having a legal guardian and the legal guardian is a uh, NRI, then you need the original court order to prove that he is the legal guardian. You cannot declare anyone as a guardian, right? You cannot blindly say, oh, this person is a guardian for my son. You cannot say that. If he is a guardian, the procedure has to be done. It has to be done legally. So you should have the original court order to prove that he is the guardian of the candidate under the provisions of the Guardians and Wards Act 1890. Okay, you need to get the court order. Now, another important question many people ask is, is NEET score mandatory? Can I get a seat without appearing for NEET? Can I get a seat without passing NEET? Okay, the answer is very, very straightforward. You must pass NEET exam to get an MBBS seat. If your child has not passed NEET exam, forget about MBBS, go and look for other courses or put your child to repeat NEET. Okay. Don't even try, don't waste your money, don't waste your effort if your child could not clear NEET. Because no one can get a seat for you. They will try to cheat you. Don't, again, I am cautioning, don't get cheated. Right. Don't get greedy. Right. And um, um, the most of the problems are created or caused by greedy parents. They, they, they want uh, a best college with the least score. They want the best college with least amount of money. They want to get a seat without passing NEET. Right? So don't be greedy. Right? Your child, if he has not cleared, he might be good at something else. Look for that. Or maybe give him another option. Maybe he might not have. Uh, studied well during this exam due to some pressure, right? Give him another one year, let him go through a uh, proper study, proper plan, and then let him take NEET uh, next time if he is really interested, right? Don't try to take shortcuts. You are not only cheating the system, you are putting yourself into trouble. Not only yourself into trouble, your child also will be in trouble, right? So don't do that. It's not really necessary. Finally, can I get direct admission from a college? As I said, it's not really necessary. You can go through government counseling and you will get a seat. Don't try to go through middleman, agent, right? Don't get cheated. But to answer the question, can I get direct admission from a college? Yes, it is possible. But when? You won't be able to get the admission during the counseling period. Say, for example, the counseling starts from September, right? So generally the counseling may go on for two months or three months. So let's say September, October, and November, the admission happens. Now, during this period, you won't be given an admission from the college directly. They may take uh, some advanced booking, but there is no guarantee that you will get a seat. Please remember that. The college may take advanced booking, but there is no guarantee that you will get a seat. because the colleges can do admission only for seats that are not filled by the government. The government is unable to fill the seat. After three months of counseling, after several rounds of counseling, if the government says, sorry, I'm not able to fill the seats you surrendered to me, I'm going to give it back to you. Say, for example, your particular college, 150 seats given to the government. Say government quota, management quota, NRI quota. The government will run the counseling for three, four rounds, first round, second round, mop up round, and so on. After so many rounds, still, if the seats are vacant, those seats will be surrendered to the college. Now, then only the college can fill the seats through whatever they have done. Even then, the short list of candidates should be given by the government. If your name is not in the short list, the college cannot even give you the admission, even if you have paid some money in advance. And if all the seats has been filled in counseling and no seats fall vacant for the college, then the college will not be able to do admission, right? They, they might return you the advanced booking. And after three months, you will find that, oh, there is no seat for me. And you will think back and then 
think that oh i should have taken the seat in counseling the counseling seats were available for my mark so don't even try unnecessarily getting into the colleges directly i know one college in tamil nadu last year there were uh, people who are trying to approach directly that college the college was confident of doing admission but unfortunately due to some issues between the tamil nadu um, selection committee and the college no admission happened for that college in last year and if anyone has booked a seat in that college they would have found it difficult because no admission happened so please remember it is not really necessary to directly approach the college this is what i'm telling from the start of this presentation okay that brings us to the end of this presentation this is what exactly i spoke to or yeah more or less what i spoke to the people who came for the hindu education plus career fair 2022 if you have any questions related to what i have presented or if you have, if you have any questions that are related to medical admission procedures please leave your questions in the comments below i will try to address them as quickly as possible thank you bye bye